everyone. Today we got to play Island Siege. So this game is where you build forts and attack each other. But before we start talking about it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because you like to know about board games and that's what we talk about here. So Randy, tell us more about this particular board game. Uh, well, this is the second edition of Island Siege. The uh -huh. first was originally released in 2013 and it was a two-player game exclusively. So okay. It was re-released in 2021 as a two to four player game. Uh, actually, it's one to four. They added a solo play oh, to it okay. as well. Oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, it, it plays uh, one to four and is 14 and up for age. Uh, the Board Game Geek gives it a rating of 7.2 and it's ranked 48.85. Uh, designer is Dan Manfredini. Artists are Jared Blando and Jim Maxwell. Published by Ape Games. Okay, so let's talk about quality of pieces. So your card are standard, fair, a little thin, no um, linen finish or anything else like that. So kind of lackluster, if you will. Um, you have your standard um, colored cubes, white, gray, black. Um, the expansion added pink as well. well. It, it, there's built-in expansions. There's actually three built-in expansions in the game. And it's a small box, so in addition to the game, you got three little expansions, and it's really cheap. I think it runs up to twenty nine ninety nine, but you can get it less at most of your yeah theme stores. So um, you also have tiny meeples; they are tiny uh, meeples, and you have mm -hmm. a tiny shaped ship. Um, those I thought were okay. This definitely reminds me of the Tiny Epic series of games, as far as uh, this to me should have been Tiny Epic Siege. Yeah, it kind of actually should. It is very. Um, Reminisce of what you would kind of see. I'm kind of missing Robert's big play mat for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, kind of that expectation there. Um, the dice themselves, it really throws me off that they used a different yellow for the extra die. Yeah, yeah I wish they would show the different color instead of just a yellow. alternate shade of yellow. Yeah, it's a darker, uglier yellow. So that was kind of lame. Um, and then your coin cardboard really coin bad. tidbits. We didn't use them because they were so bad. We just used our I mean, their card, poker chip money chip victory points. Their cardboard. Coins. I mean, the thematics on them are fine. Like, the artwork's fine, but they themselves They're are, just really thin. Yeah, but, overall. Well, what, what's really weird is the player boards. Cause they're inlaid. Well, they're inlaid, but they have absolutely no reason to be. This is like the one game I would say that you wouldn't can save your money and I, not inlay them. Because the, the, the shapes of the inlays are different than the things you're putting in them. So the meeples are in circular shaped inlay, which makes no sense. sense. The ship fits. The ship does fit. That's the only thing on the board that fits. <laughs> your resources, I mean, there's a big giant rectangle for you to put resources in, but you really don't need it for this. Listen, I'm fine with the inlay board. It's the only... Yeah, this is kind of the silliest inlay I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to inlay something, this would have been the thing. Especially if you're at the price point it's at. Yeah. To spend your money on an inlay board, it seems kind of silly. Yeah, but give me Give me, give better, me better, better dice, better cards. Something. Um, so overall, though, I think this probably hits around a 6.5. You do have the inlay boards, whether useless or not. Um, you do have the sh different actual shaped meeples. Um, the cardboard is pretty thick for the boards. That's where I'm at. What I, are you like? I'm not there. I'm 5.5 .5 to 6. I don't think it's much better than Catan. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, the inlay boards, if I cared about that, would it, put it over to maybe a 6. But they there's really no purpose for them in this game. Yeah, I mean, and the cards are pretty cheap. I'm not yeah, the cards are pretty awful. Um, so let's talk about theme. Um, I don't feel like this was a pirate theme, but I'm definitely feeling piratey y because essentially all you're doing is tacking the other, uh, yeah. your opponents and trying to raise their forts. So I'm kind of like... Well, it's not claiming it, to be pirate theme. I you? know, but it feel this is probably more pirate theme than some of the other pirate <laughs> themes we play. I'm just saying it does feel that way. Um, but it's not pirate themed. It is... Maybe we're different empires and we're attacking mm -hmm. each other's towns. Maybe we're in yeah. the Caribbean going after each other. I feel like there should be pirates. That's the next expansion. There should be like a pirate expansion um, where you can't have forts. You can only have ships or something well, like that. Well, you have the captain expansion, which those, they kind of look like pirates, the captains. Yeah, uh, so I almost, it's just a weird, you know, 
it feels way more piratey some of their pirates yeah. but I, it's not a pirate no it's, game. it's a it's a island siege game it's the name you caribbean right so the caribbean um square wise on theme um i felt the theme yeah it was just the, the game well theme. it definitely is in, in, integrated into the gameplay no it absolutely absolutely I just, I was feeling way more priority than I was. Yeah, it was definitely it was about. a generic, you know, there's no story. It's just very, just generic island and sea. Yeah, but <laughs> the fact is, is I felt the theme yeah. in this. So I feel like, okay, because I felt the theme, I'll probably give it a seven because I felt the theme. Mm -hmm. um, even though maybe it was the wrong theme, but I still felt it. So I'm at a seven. What is your score on theme? I'm probably a 6.5. I think it, okay. you know, it definitely, the mechanics being a, an integration of, of an and the art siege, was nice. It definitely felt like a siege the whole time. And you got a little bit of engine development as far as building buildings. I like that. But, you know, thematically you're building your town or you're building ships. So you're building your, you know, yeah. forts. To, to, to and this expenses. is where we do put art. And I thought the art was good. Yeah. So um, moving on to actual rule book. How was the rule book? So they did have cheat sheets. Mm -hmm. The cheat sheets, I thought, were spot on. Yeah, they, they, um, the only thing I would say is they could have given a little bit more detail. You wouldn't have even needed the rule book on the buildings yes. section. The, build, the, the draw the is flat out ex perfectly explained. Mm -hmm. Attack is really well done. The build is the only one that's not detailed at all on there. Yeah, I wish that one would have been a little bit more... I, but I, I don't know how they could have simplified it any. Well, like, they, they could have had another card on the, just like the attack. I mean, you could have done two cards instead of one back-to-back -back and put the attack and build on back-to-back -back card. And I think that would have been fine. And mm -hmm. then, you know, that's really what they needed. Because uh, there is a lot, I mean, there's not as much about the build as the attack, but there's more things to build. So it would have filled it back of a card fine. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and like... You said, I mean, other than that, if, uh, if that uh, had been more explanatory, yeah, we could have you, skipped you, reading you wouldn't the rules. Have, you know, yeah, you wouldn't need to go. Which you is, would still read them. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't you have to reference them. You would have read them, them and oh, I would have just went by the well, cards. Well, I'm saying, you wouldn't have to refer back to them like we had to do a few times while we, the first time we build a building or the first yeah, time we build a ship. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's really the only part we needed to look up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's the rule book is fine. The rule book is twenty pages long, but it's a small rule book because it's a small box. Um, it's got you know nice imagery in it. It's very self-explanatory. Yeah. It's a pretty straightforward, simple I, game. I gotta admit, I think uh, I think we did good. So, what score did you give for? I haven't yet. Uh, I'll probably give it an eight. I think it's a okay for for what it is. It's a real simple, easy read. Okay, cool. I. Uh, uh, awesome cheat sheets. And the cheat sheets so are very they were well good. Done. All right, so moving then on to actual gameplay. So um, it's very straightforward. So first you check in the beginning of your turn whether you have victory or not, which is, is if your all your colonists have been placed onto the different cards that are available or you have 20 money. Um, so those are the two options. Then if you haven't won yet, which is typical, right? <laughs> so then you go into the colonized phase. So what the amount of so every fort that you have out you put a colonist in each fort so you end up you know if you have three forts out so i didn't realize until a little bit too late because you almost won because i didn't realize that and so you had three forts out so you're putting out three guys really fast where i only had one because i was waiting on the right combination of cubes and so that that ended up um hurting me um right there at the niche pin but i was able to do some amazing rolling um and then um, so then you go into the, you get to do the action phase and you get to choose one out of three actions. The draw action, which is pretty straightforward. You draw three cards, you keep two, you hand one to your opponent. Um, and then build, build one fort building or ship. So the cost, um, so you just play the card. If you, you get one cube for free for a fort and it's the one that's flagged. And then if you have any cubes in your, um, supply area you put them on the card it does matter about placement though so the more colors that you more of the same color touching the stronger that section of the fort is so the more of a single color you can get to put on that ship or on that fort is is better um to end up building a ship you end up so if you have colonists in your fort 
and you have the cost of the colonists, which is up here in this top corner. Like this one says four. I'll take the four colonists out of the fort and put them on the ship and have them sail away. So it empties out your fort so you can put more on during your next turn. But then you also have a ship. The ships typically give you special abilities that when you go to attack. And then the last card, of course, is the buildings. So the buildings, it's the same function as the ships. You have the cost of colonists. Um, they need to be in your fort that you're placing it in. And then you just move them down. And then you get a bit the benefits of the bottom as well as typically a special ability with that. Yeah. Um, the, the other play. thing you didn't mention on the forts is if you arrange your tiles, because they have a special arrangement on the each fort has its own arrangement of yeah, shape. Yeah, I, I didn't mention if, the if back layer. If you layer one behind vertically on the card behind another cube, it's protected and the first cube in front has to be destroyed before the one behind can be destroyed, which is a really cool idea too. Now, the one problem I have with the cards is you can't hardly see those shapes. I know they it was really yeah. I wish they would have a real problem. Yeah, I wish they would have outlined it or something. Well, they outlined it, but it's so faded you can barely see it. It's a little white line. They yeah. should have done yeah. like a thick black, like there you go. Yeah, they needed something that stood out. I agree out. with that because I I, 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 it took me several tries to figure out where some of those were. Yeah, because I mean they're they're not one to, to hide the art is the thing I think. But no, I, I get that, but at the same time you have to have functionality. Yes, yeah. So they should have done something. Functionality should always trump art. And it's it's really hard to see those lines. It's it's, it's almost to the point. I mean, if, if I had to strain, and my eyes are bad, but they're not that bad. I mean, my glasses yeah. compensate. So, all right. So the last action that you could take is the attack phase. So with the attack phase, is you take the appropriate amount of dice. Um, you start out with three, but over the course of the game, you have the option to gain your fourth dice. You roll those dice. Um, typically, you have one standard free. Uh, Reroll, and then you can gain another um, and additional other ones depending on the special abilities that you have. So in this particular roll, I ended up two ships and one white, for example. So you forgot that before any of this, you have to declare your attack. Oh, on the, the so fourth you that you're your attacking. Ship, you've got a little wooden, uh, it looks just like well, basically a miniature version of the Catan mm -hmm. Seafarer ships. Yeah. And you're going to put it next to one of the forts of your opponent. Yes. And then you're going to attack that specific yeah. fort. So, and you could potentially attack some of their ships and the buildings behind that fort as well, if you based on your die rolls. Okay. Yeah. So for an example, with this roll, I got two of the wheels. So in this case, I have a special ability card that I can lay, um, and I'll play it. Um, and then... And those are an expansion. The captains. Those are expansion. So you have to gain those by not using wheels. Um, well, you use the wheels to buy them instead yeah. of playing them. Right. And um, so that's how you get those cards. But then, so you have the options for rerolls, but like in this case, I got one gray icon. So I could remove one gray cube. However- If it were in the front. If, yeah, if it was in the front. But if there's only one, so if this was next to two, like if there was two gray cubes together, or in the back, I could not touch this. Um, so that's where those rerolls come in handily to get what you want. So, um, so the last dice that you, uh, or the last side of the face that we're going to be talking about is the red. It looks like a sun or an ammunition fire. Um, that is the second wave. So after your first um, color choice is resolved, then you go into um, the second wave. So. Um, there are actually two options. You can either, so you choose the initial color that you're going to attack. So like, for example, I'm taking off a gray. Um, then you have the choice, for example, if I had this dice, I could either take a black cube or trigger my second wave. So my second wave allows me to destroy any cube anywhere placed inside the fort, no matter if it's in the back row, no matter if it's a chain of um, colors it will destroy one cube completely. Um, so this that is the only way to really get cubes to actually build your fort is to attack. Um, so this game strongly encourages you to attack and go back and forth yeah. with the siege. Um, and then, so if the fort actually ends up getting destroyed, you have your workers that get returned back to the colonize. However, you can decide to put a statue in their honor. Well, and that's one of the expansions, too, is that they built where you could actually have a memorial and yes. remove one of your guys permanently. If you game. have enough, you can remove. 
Um, yeah. So in this case, there are um, requirements on the board. So for example, this one's remove three colonists and you'll get two and, and pay two black cube and then you get coin and you get to place a worker permanently there. Now, in most games, you don't like to lose workers for the rest of the game, but in this case, that actually benefits you and it brings you closer to the win condition because you don't want any workers in your uh, board, your player board. You want them on your um, forts and your buildings and your ships. Yeah. And okay. the, the buildings we didn't talk about, what the buildings do is let you repair your forts. So yes. when you as well as give you a special yeah. ability and, and they give you special money. ability and money. Yeah. So when you build it, you choose the fort to build it behind. You can have any number of buildings behind it, a single fort, but it adds a cube back of the given color that's on the card, and that's one of the or the main way of getting the pink resource, which is a third expansion. Which those are not pictured on the dice, so the only way you can destroy a pink is with a second, second wave. wave attack. Um, so moving, so that is essentially the essence of the game. We've covered most of the components. Um, overall, I actually kind of like this. This is a bit of tacky for me, but I think it was pretty much set up to begin with. Um, I definitely would have to be in the right mood for it just because I'm not a huge tacky fan, but this was good. I actually really enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. Um, and I liked the different components. I liked that there was a little bit of engine building. Um, but the only way to get resources is to attack your opponent. So it's like, okay, we're going to attack each other, kind of accepting that going in. Um, and I enjoyed some of the mechanics. I liked being able to move your colonists around. I like being able to buildings to support your keep. I love the, like, the cubes mattering, what colors you have, and the placement of those. Um, so overall, actually, I kind of enjoyed this for a little small box game. Um, it was actually rather nice. Even for the attacking component, which I don't normally care for, I'm probably actually going to probably give this a 7.5. It was enjoyable. I would probably play this again without too much of a fuss. Um, what do you think? Well, I, I, I'm kind of torn because I would agree with you on most of what you said. The only concern I had is this could have ended in like two minutes really fast had you not rolled luckily on that one attack because... I had managed with the three forts I built to basically in four turns get rid of all my guys. And well, but I didn't real... understand the importance of the game. Well, games. no, I know. I'm just saying this would have been a real downer game. You know, we would have been having a totally different conversation in this review if it had ended in four turns with almost no attacking and it was just one and done. As it you turned out, you, you won that battle, destroyed my fort, sent my guys back, and it, it, it created a chain of events that caused this game to go back and forth quite a bit after that. Which was nice. That was, that's that was, what a, I like. that was a fun that, game. It, that made it a lot better. I really do think if you have a bunch of new players, though, it could end up yeah. that way. And I think everybody would hate it if that happened. In that scenario, if it had played out where yeah. somebody just boom, 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 built three forts, and then they win the game in four turns... It's you know I think it 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 could have benefited from being a longer game by having more people meeples to get off the board. I I just think it was oh, yeah, but at the too same much time, I mean, how much? Well, I I understand what you're saying, but the still at the same time, it did take a while to finally get victory yeah. because those colonists just moved around continuously, yeah. and that was awesome yeah. in, in a great you know fun dynamic way. Mm -hmm. But I I will admit. If they made this somehow bigger, I wouldn't complain. Yeah. Like I feel like you could have made this more, and I would have been okay. I liked the premise. I liked the mechanics involved. Mm -hmm. um, this, you know, this is a small box game, but if they made it bigger, that, yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I think awesome. for the price point it's at, it this was is a, good. it was a really. I, I I don't like small box games. I've said this I don't know how many times. This one, I actually was surprised. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it because it didn't look very appealing when I got yeah, it. Yeah, so what's funny is, so the story behind this game actually, is, so it was Randy's birthday was last week, and we, um, I got sent to the store with the list. So I get to, the <laughs> get to our local gaming store with my list. They only have one on the list, and I was responsible of getting all the presents for a bunch of different people for Randy. And so I was like shifting through because I had a budget in mind on each person shifting through the small box games 
and ended up finding this one. And I was like, I don't think Randy has that because that's the number one concern. <laughs> well, he's just going to get another game whether he likes it or not because he, at least he doesn't have this one. And I'm really glad I did. Yeah, <laughs> really yeah I, I mean, it was a chosen. pleasant surprise. I, I think I'm more of a seven just because of the swingy nature of I'm afraid that, that this could but end that's in a part room. of the fun. I don't know how it's fun just, it's it, going to be if somebody ooh. wins in four turns. Well, I, no, that's not fun. I'd but I do it. like the fact that it can just yeah. swing so yeah. fast. And, and we played it two player. That's which the other is the thing. way it was Which is the way it was originally meant. designed. I don't know how this will work with three or four yet. I'm excited. I, I actually would like to try it with more players, but you know, I'm I'm just afraid it's in those cases we're going you know, it's going to have to be everybody gang up on one because they're getting ready to win the game type scenario. No, but I mean just yeah. I mean, well, but there was that one card that I was really nervous about because you were going to win and I had a like you had a two block or one block and then you had a three layer. And I was just like, how am I going to defeat one of these? Like, mm -hmm. one's going to be very, because it was a pink. One's going to be very difficult for me to beat. And then one has that three layer. There's no way I can win it because of the way the second thing works. And so I was really, I was like, okay, well, here's hoping I roll the best. You know, and there was, there was two different um, times that was the case. If I didn't roll good, you would have won the game. Well, the only reason you managed to take it out, because it wouldn't legitimately be allowed, able to do it, is because you got... That you got two of those uh, second wave attacks. So, yeah. Because uh, uh, you could only declare one color, and I had three colors on the, uh, the thing. So you could you could only attack one color. With, no, no. With the, the standard that dust. one, there was two gray and one pink. No, I had a white, gray, and pink on that. No, no, that was the straight line. Oh, okay. I thought that's what we were talking about. Sorry. No, no. The straight line, I had to take two turns to do that. So, um, no, I this game, I, I was. I was pleasantly surprised, yeah. and this is actually kind of good. So and I, I will say, I, the the expansions were pretty well thought out. I, I thought for being just like a, I cannot see playing this game without the expansions. Yeah, I, I can't either because I, I like the I love the memorial thing. You know, your, your fort gets destroyed, your people well, get sent and back, and you build a memorial. Well, somebody. there is some semblance of okay, yeah, yeah, your fort was destroyed, but at least you could get one. But you have to have the resources to be able yes. to fill them. And the quantity of colony. So in the back of your mind, do I spend my last two blocks yeah. on this keep? Or do I try to, you know, save it in yeah. case I get destroyed? And I will say, I, 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 don't, I think that the coin is almost like a secondary victory condition. I can't see going for that as a strategy. I think... With four players, four though? Four players, maybe. You could specialize. Maybe, that's, well, the thing is, is if you're constantly destroying keeps and you're constantly building buildings, this was a long game. Mm -hmm. Money was the way it was going to go if you couldn't get someone to trigger the colonists. Yeah. So I... I think validly it should be in there, and I think it could be a valid strategy with more players. Yeah, you could have one person be a pacifist and set out and just build, and then you know they, that could be a strategy. But I think if you, people see that's happening, then they're going to become the target. Right, but exactly, it's all about building. So mm -hmm. I mean, you may not. Okay, yeah, you keep destroying my forts. I'm just going to keep building my yeah. forts. But and, it's an interesting mechanic that they've added that secondary. Level. Yeah, well, and not only that though, but if you notice, it's you draw three cards and you only play one to your opponent. So if we had more players, instead of automatically giving it, you know, to you or to me, you get to choose who you gave that card to. Which I think there's a lot of times you wanted cards, but you didn't get it because you didn't want to give me anything. Because I I did not take the card action the whole entire game. Mm -hmm. I let you do that for me. I appreciate you. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's, and I think that's an interesting component if there were more, forced more people to take cards. Um, well, thank you guys for joining us. We had fun. It was quite surprisingly uh, a mm -hmm. good time tonight. Um, we appreciate you guys so much. We hope to catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.